Blood and Wine, the second DLC for The Witcher 3, has a notoriously morally ambiguous ending, which is saying something considering this game is full of tough decisions. There are three endings to choose from when it comes to the fates of Detlaf, Siana, Regis, and the Duchess. The first ending is as follows. Geralt helps Siana to escape the Land of Fables and leads her to Tesha Mutna in order to lure out Detlaf and stop the attacks on Beauclair. Regis and Geralt both believe Detlaf, at his heart not an evil being, will spare Siana, and so they're willing to take the risk. However, Detlaf, consumed by rage and emotional instability, kills Siana brutally. He seeks no quarrel with the Witcher, however, and so it's up to the player to decide whether to let Detlaf go or slay him. If you let him go, you'll be imprisoned by the Duchess. If you kill him, although having avenged Siana, you'll still be imprisoned anyway. In the second ending, Siana is not whisked away from the Land of Fables, and so when Detlaf is summoned to Tesha Mutna, he becomes enraged and attacks both Regis and Geralt. After the fight, the Witcher receives full honours and the sisters are led into reconciliation, presuming you found out the Duchess was to be Siana's final victim. You get this option by choosing to talk to the boot cleaner, who will reveal the man carrying the incriminating letter. In the final ending, the same happens as in ending two, but Geralt fails to bring about a reconciliation by not finding out who the fifth victim was to be. Siana kills the Duchess and is in turn slayed by Damien. So there is only one ending where you can actually choose to save Detlaf, and that's where you sacrifice Siana. So the central question of this video is whether Detlaf deserves to die for slaying his former lover, as well as his other transgressions. In other words, who deserves to die more, Detlaf or Siana? Detlaf is unique as an antagonist because he's far from evil, so it's understandable why many players, when they're forced to kill Detlaf, neither the second or the third ending, are upset. Regis acts as Detlaf's chief defender throughout the questline. According to Regis, Detlaf is a rational, compassionate vampire who understands little of human deceit. Indeed, the Witcher discovers that Detlaf did not kill those knights of his own free will. He was blackmailed by Siana. Equally, Detlaf saved Regis after the latter was eviscerated by Vilgefortz. In the final Witcher book, Regis and Geralt fight the immensely powerful wizard who had in his grasp Ciri. Regis was blasted to bits by Vilgefortz and became nothing more than a splat on the wall. Detlaf had to go to immense lengths to save Regis. Vampires can regenerate from grievous wounds if another vampire shares their life force, which Detlaf did over many years with Regis. Although Detlaf is clearly a compassionate being, on another level he is also ruthless. This is best exemplified by the swarm of vampires he besets on Beauclair, after the Witcher fails to deliver Siana within three days. It seems Detlaf has little care for human life. It's not that he wants to actively kill people, it's that he's indifferent to doing so when he feels that he needs to. Detlaf, although hardly a villain, is dangerous. He's emotionally unstable, easy to enrage, and is indifferent to killing humans when he feels it's deserved. Detlaf even shocked Regis when he nonchalantly slaughtered Siana without giving her a chance to explain. I believe that Detlaf should be killed, and ideally that Siana should be saved so that she can face justice. Here's why. Detlaf has objectively done wrong. Of course he was initially blackmailed, but he didn't have to send swarms of vampires into the city of Beauclair in order to get what he wanted. He knew Siana had betrayed him. Why not simply leave and never return? Or if he felt that he had to kill the woman, why not threaten one individual, such as the Duchess herself, rather than the entire city? Detlaf is a danger to humanity. His willingness to kill innocents for his own agenda is callous and cruel. Although Detlaf might have reasons for his actions, even Regis finds it hard to justify the mass slaughter he instigates to get back at his lover. To be clear, I'm not arguing that Siana is guilt-free or that she's better than Detlaf. In fact, I pity Detlaf more than I do her. I have sympathy for the vampire who was, in the final analysis, forced into a horrible situation which sent him emotionally haywire. Siana is far more culpable than Detlaf because she consciously engineered the entire tragedy. She decided to kill dozens of people, including her sister, so that she could get revenge. Detlaf was caught up in this ploy. Although Siana, like Detlaf, has some mitigating circumstances that lessen the severity of her crimes, though they do by no means justify them. Siana was cast out for being no more mischievous than Anna Henrietta. She simply took the blame for one of Anna's misdeeds. Alongside unceremoniously being exiled, Siana was mistreated by the knights who escorted her and abandoned to essentially die 
beyond Toussaint's borders. There are consequences to killing Detlaf that are more long term. Most importantly, Regis is shunned by his fellow vampires and must leave Toussaint's borders. It's forbidden for a vampire to kill a fellow vampire. Nonetheless, this is not a devastating burden for Regis to bear. He comments that he will simply move south, potentially to Nilfgaard, although it's a shame he'll no longer be safe among others of his kind. This is a small price to pay for the peace of mind that you've killed a highly dangerous individual such as Detlaf. In short, Detlaf, a highly emotionally volatile being, was manipulated by someone he loved dearly. His reaction was to murder countless civilians so that he could get his revenge. Detlaf, although a vampire, comes across as ultimately human in blood and wine. In the real world, people and the actions they commit are rarely black and white. Detlaf had reasons to act in the way that he did, but his actions were disproportionate to Siana's wrongdoing. Ultimately, Detlaf is no villain. He's merely a flawed individual who, forced into the wrong situation, flew off the handle to detrimental effect. It's on these grounds that he deserves to die at Teshumutna, as tragic as that is. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe and please leave video suggestions in the comments below, be they Witcher, Fallout, or Elder Scrolls. I make videos in all three game series, so I'll take any of them on. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.